Hey guys, welcome back to Click Academics. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to solve this exponential equation. And make sure to stick and see the end of the problem, where I have three bonus problems that are similar to this one, which you guys can try to solve. Alright, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 is equal to 144. So now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 6 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 to the power of 6 is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n, right? And m times n, these two are interchangeable, meaning this is the same thing as a to the power of m times m. And if you can write a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, then this means that we can write a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of m. Meaning a to the power of m to the power of n is the same thing as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of 6 to the power of 6. And we can think of x to the power of 6 as m in this case and 6 as n. So if I switch these two places, I get x to the power of 6 to the power of x to the power of 6. And now uh, this is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 6 equal to the variable y. So now if I replace x to the power of 6 with y, I get y to the power of y is equal to 144 to the power of 6. Now 144, this is the same thing as 12 to the power of 2. So if I substitute in 12 to the power of 2 for 144, I get 12 to the power of 2 to the power of 6. Now if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 12 to the power of 2 to the power of 6, that's going to equal 12 to the power of 2 times 6, which is equal to 12 to the power of 12. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 12. So now remember how we set x to the power of 6 equal to y. So now that we know that y is 12, we have x to the power of 6 is equal to 12. Now if I take the 6th root on both sides, these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to 6 root of 12. And I can also write this as x is equal to 12 to the power of 1 over 6. All right, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. And m times n, these two are interchangeable, meaning I can also rewrite this as a to the power of n times n. And if we can rewrite a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, this means that we can rewrite a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in other words, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, we can think of x to the power of 2 as m and 2 as n. So I'm going to switch these two places. So now I have x to the power of 2 to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 2 equal to the variable y. So now I have y to the power of y is equal to 16 to the power of 2. Now 16 here, this is the same thing as 4 to the power of 2. So now if I substitute in 4 to the power of 2 for 16, 
I get y to the power of y is equal to 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So 4 to the power of 2 to the power of 2, that's going to equal 4 to the power of 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4, so I have y to the power of y is equal to 4 to the power of 4. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, and this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 4. Now, however, we aren't done yet, because remember how we set x squared equal to y. So x squared is equal to y, and we know that y is equal to 4. So we have x squared is equal to 4. Now, to solve this, I'm going to take the square root on both sides, so the square root of x squared is equal to square root of 4. So now these two are going to cancel out. I'm left with x is equal to the square root of 4, which is equal to positive or negative 2. So now to check, my original equation was x to the power of x to the power of 2 is equal to 16. So now we know that x is equal to positive or negative 2. So let's first start out with x is equal to positive 2. If x is equal to positive 2, I have 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now 2 to the power of 2, that's equal to 4. So I have 2 to the power of 4 is equal to 16. And now 2 to the power of 4, this is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16. So it's equal to 16, meaning I have 16 is equal to 16. And this is right, meaning our solution of x is equal to positive 2 is right. So now for x is equal to negative 2, I have negative 2 to the power of negative 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 16. Now negative 2 to the power of 2 is still positive 4, so I have negative 2 to the power of positive 4 is 16. And negative 2 to the power of positive 4 is 16. So I have 16 is equal to 16. And this is right, so both our solutions are right. All right, so I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 100. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the power of 5 on both sides. So now I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5 is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n, right? And m times n, these two are interchangeable, meaning this is also equal to a to the power of n times m. And if you can write a to the power of m times n as a to the power of m to the power of n, this means that we can write a to the power of n times m as a to the power of n to the power of m. So in simpler terms, a to the power of m to the power of n is equal to a to the power of n to the power of m. So in this case, I have x to the power of x to the power of 5 to the power of 5. And I can think of x to the power of 5 here as m, and I can think of 5 as n. So if I switch these two places, I get x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5. Now this is equal to 100 to the power of 5. Now 100 is the same thing as 10 squared. So if I replace 10 squared with 100, I get x to the power of 5 to the power of x to the power of 5 is equal to 10 squared to the power of 5. Now I'm going to let x to the power of 5 equal to the variable y. So if I replace y, for x to the power of 5, I get y to the power of y is equal to 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 10 to the power of 2 to the power of 5, that's going to equal 10 to the power of 10, because 2 times 5 is 10. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of a is equal to b to the power of b, this means that a is equal to b. So in this case, y is equal to 10. Now, however, we aren't done yet, because remember how we said x to the power of 5 is equal to y. 
So if x to the power of 5 is equal to y, well, we already have our value of y, which is 10, meaning x to the power of 5 is equal to 10. Now, to solve this, I'm going to take the fifth root on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x is equal to the fifth root of 10, or this can also be written as 10 to the power of 1 over 5.